All right, so in this video, we're gonna be looking at some examples of some shots which, you know, incorporate these things here. If you've just noticed, I've added just one thing which I felt I missed out and I should probably mention it here, is that with styling props, and there's this word I've added here which is called action, okay? So this is also gonna be important and I'll just let you know what this means when I actually show you the shots, okay? So let's see the shots. All right, so you can see this shot of this coffee here with the steam and these beans here. So let's just try to see, uh, you know, all those six elements. So for example, believe it or not, I actually took this shot with just the kit lens on my DSLR. So that was the gear, okay? Then let's talk about the settings and composition. Here, I was actually just using the automatic mode on the camera. I was not even using the manual mode. So that's about the settings. My composition was just a basic composition of shooting at slightly at at an angle which is just above this uh, mug. So you can see uh, the coffee inside it. So again, nothing too special uh, about that. Then when it comes to the surface here, you can see that this was really, really important, right? Because this jute bag or this cloth that I had here really gives this a rusty feel, okay? Then when it comes to the styling and props, you can see that I've added these coffee beans. So they really add because they tell the story about the coffee, right? The lighting here probably is the most important thing, okay? So what you're going to learn in this course is that you don't have to have all those six elements absolutely going perfectly or equal weightage given to all six things always. No, it's not going to happen because each shot will have that weightage in different, divided in different ways, and probably one or two of those elements usually will dominate, okay? That means it's all about one of those two elements and the other elements play a small part. So you don't always have to make sure that all six elements are perfect. For example, here what I feel is the lighting element is what creates the shot, okay? Because it really gives it the dark and moody feel. So here I'm doing, uh, this technique is called as low-key photography, where you kind of just restrict the light uh, to near your subject and everything else is black. Now, how do you achieve all this? I will be showing you as we move up the level. So this is going to be one of the shots that we take, okay? And finally, editing was also very important here because I'm sure you must have noticed it, the smoke, uh, sorry, the steam rather, doesn't look too natural, right? So I have in editing and post-processing in Photoshop, I have slightly, or I would say quite considerably, manipulated the steam, okay? Just to kind of give it, it was not like that. It was more uh, like how steam looks to our eye, but I did some things with the eraser and some tools, some masking, and I was able to achieve this effect, okay? So editing also played a big part. You can see how all those six elements are going together. Let's see another shot, okay? So you can see here, I was shooting for a, I was doing the shoot for a cafe uh, where I was running out of ideas and finally, I actually decided to take this shot by dropping a piece of ice inside this uh, lemon iced tea. And I think this resulted in a great shot. In fact, I actually visit this particular cafe a lot myself and I love seeing this shot on their menu. You know, when you click your own shot and you see someone else actually using it, it, it just makes your day. But the point here is, here, one of the things that really made the shot was because you can see the surface, probably the background is not that interesting. It's a plain white wall against which I was shooting this. But here, and this is the reason why I added that extra word called action, okay? That is what is making that shot, okay? So styling props may not have been too good, but even action, the action of, you know, putting this ice cube, dropping it inside it, and using a fast shutter speed to capture it really gives a dramatic look to this shot, okay? So you can see, again, the weightage this time was on uh, the action part out of all the uh, elements there, okay? You can even see I was using a lens um, with a wide aperture, which I'll talk about later, what all that means. If you're absolutely new to photography, I will explain to you later, but you can see that this part is really sharp and everything else just becomes blurred, right? That's because I'm using an f2.8 prime lens. So I'll talk about prime lenses, I'll talk about what this f2.8 is, what aperture is later on. But you can see here, settings also play an important part. And of course, the most important setting here is the shutter speed, which enables me to capture this, uh, you know, this whole thing, uh, the fast motion of the ice dropping, okay? The splash, basically. Now. So also look at some other shots here. You can again see this shot has a lot of missing things. We don't really have props uh, like ingredients and styling is not up to the mark, but again, the action is good, okay? Here I did not edit the steam in any way. So this natural steam, and you can see here the background is blurred. Again, this is a dark moody shot. So lighting does play an important part, okay? 
So just kind of making you understand what is happening here. Okay, again, this is a shot I did for a, a burger cafe, okay, where they wanted me to take this shot, uh, which represented their happy hours that they you could get a burger and a beer. So sometimes you just have to do what the client tells you. And the client was straight away told me that, listen, the beer has to be slightly blurred out because our brand is about the burger. So simple as that, I gave them this uh, particular shot, okay, with this beer behind. Using a wide aperture, I was able to blur the beer behind uh, use a slightly dark mode, not too much, okay? And you can see here the surface kind of gives it a very rustic look. And we have a lot of other things going on here also, okay? Uh, finally, here you can see some shots are just going to be about lighting, okay? For example, this shot of this wine bottle in the glass, I purposely literally wanted this to be very minimal, but really, really dark. I really did not want too many things to be seen. And you can see that, you know, I was able to achieve that. This kind of gives it that really uh, mysterious feel uh, to this uh, shot. Very popular with uh, beverage shots. Again, I will be telling you about how to cut light, how to get a black background like this, how to choose a surface. Everything will be covered later on, okay? Literally just talking about things right now. And sometimes, I should point out when I'm showing you this last shot, things can be just too simple also, okay? Sometimes, literally, your lens will be enough to do the job. For example, here, the I was again doing this for a cafe, and they just released this cake, uh, new cake, and the owner simply told me, listen, I just want a very basic shot. It should just give the look that this is a mango cake. So what I did was, well, we just got some mangoes, put it behind, blurred it using the lens, okay, using a wide aperture, focused on the cake, and boom, just a plane. We were literally shooting it on a white table, okay? So here, the main thing that gave us this shot was the gear, the lens, okay? Other things were pretty much uh, ignored. So one of the bonus tips I can give you straight away is if you plan to do this for the clients, First, always ask them, do you just want simple shots? If they do, don't do anything extra because that is going to save you a lot of time and effort. Having said that, we will see everything, right? From the simple shots to the most advanced shots. But I hope that looking at these shots gave you an idea about what those six elements are. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.